What up? Back for my uh, monthly upload, I guess you could call it. Haven't really had much to show about this car. Nothing that I personally think is super interesting. So I've kind of held off until I have more parts. As you can see the car is now flipped the other way in here. It's because I've been driving it. Nothing super eventful, still just kind of working out kinks in the tune. Here I've got the AKG Motorsports bump steer correction spacers or plates or whatever you want to call it. These go between the front lower control arm and the bottom of the strut, I guess you'd call it. Uh, it'll make sense. So if you don't know what these are and you haven't seen these be installed, well, uh, you're about to see. I'm going to start by taking the bumper off since it makes it easier to fit the jack under here to get the whole front end up. It's going to be easiest uh, to jack from the front subframe to get the entire front of the vehicle up and then uh, that way I can do both pretty much at the same time without jacking one side up, putting it down, going to the other side, anyways. What we're going to be doing, well, as you can see here, because my car is pretty low, the lower control arm right here is actually not just flat. When the car is on it, the weight's on it, and the suspension's compressed, that this point is actually higher than here. That's really not great for the suspension geometry. So what these spacers do is they go right there. So fire the wheel off and get a better uh, shot of that. Spacer is going to go right between here, and let's uh, let's figure out what size this is and whip these off. Right, so we've got our 19 here. So the spacer is going to go here and then bolt the bottom of the strut back on there. Now, here's an issue that uh, I've heard is pretty common. There's a little lip to keep things aligned, I guess. This little lip right here. And that notch is where that lip is supposed to go. I've heard about this notch being misshapen or too tight or whatever else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the plate here and I might, well, I'll clean it and see how it fits. If cleaning it works, then that's great. But if not, I might have to take a file and just take a little bit of material off in between this little uh, channel here. Got some better fitment here. So what I had to do She's still a bit tight, but not that bad. So what I had to do was clean up the surface and then I took my file and I filed the left side of the channel. And then I also filed a little bit off of here as well. And then it was able to fit. Now on to the next fitment issue. Let's see. So I'll grab the longer bolts that come with the kit. That one goes through. That one goes through. And that one doesn't go through. Um, it's hard to show it because the car is too low for me to fit the camera under. But the 
hole in here is too far towards the front of the car by like maybe about like two millimeters. So I'm gonna have to remount this hole. I'm hoping I have a drill bit big enough, just a little bit so I can fit that bolt. And I'm a little annoyed because considering the price they sell these at and to get it across the border into Canada, I think this thing was like two, these things were like $200. I bust out the drill. I try to find a drill bit that fits there and remount the hole a little bit. Oh, drilling into a brand new part sucks, but it fits now. Bam. So we should be good to go. So we've got some blue Loctite here. So we're going to be putting in the bolts. Um, I don't want to use red because that would require me having to torch the bolts to get them out later. And uh, I'm also going to be torquing them to factory spec. So shouldn't need to really put any Loctite, but blue should be fine. A plus fitment AKG. Just kidding. I'm gonna try and describe what's going on here. So as you can see, I took the whole rotor and caliper off to gain a bit more space. Now, when I test fit everything without the bolts, as you can see, there's also a raised area here to go into the notch that's part of the knuckle. Now, when I did the test fit, it fit. It went in there fine, there was no issues, but that was before I realized that the circle here, or the hole where the bolt goes through, was off. And I guess I took enough off of the side to have it line up properly just, just enough on the bottom side. But on the side where it really matters is where the threads are being received. The bottom side is just a little bit bigger, so there's a little bit of play. But up here, um, it needs to be better fit. So what's happening is right as it's starting to tighten into here, I can't really fit my lens in there, but right here where the notch goes in, the left hand side has like probably half a mil of a gap and the right hand side is being forced against the wall of that notch, the receiving notch in the knuckle. So what I'm going to have to do is pull this all back off and then from there, I will have to probably open up the receiving end and narrow in the other side, or what I can do is keep reaming this hole, which sucks. Uh, but no matter what, it sucks. So I just shaved a whole bunch of metal off this thing, reamed out that hole quite a bit. I also filed this side lightly, clean everything up again, clean this up thoroughly, so just to show you, it does fit in here and it actually has a little bit of play, which the play was already there before I filed anything. And then down here, a little bit tighter, but it does end up fitting. Just to see, it's still a bit tight, but it does go through eventually. So I'll try this again. After lots of drilling and filing, I finally have everything mounted. So now I just need to torque it to spec. Let's look at the difference here. So, not a drastic difference, and this is the thickest option that they offer, but you can see that the arm, the lower arm now, is no longer angled upwards. It's, well, probably gonna be about flat when the, uh, when the car is on the ground, but still should be better than it was. Here is the other side for a direct comparison. pointing 
angled upwards. So let's get this side done. You'll see here the reason I had to pull the rotor off is because the bolt to the very right ends up hitting the rotor on the way out. Fully compressed state of the uh, front lower control arm um, with the spacer in. So as you can see now it's more flat. You can imagine without the extra, I think it's like an inch and a half is the thickness of the spacer, how much further up the arm would be. So not great for suspension geometry the way it was. The other one done here. So that's it. But uh, yeah, not, not a crazy mod. Uh, considering the amount of modification required for a relatively expensive chunk of aluminum that should be machined properly to fit, um, is a bit more of an adventure than I was expecting. So that's it for now, and see you guys in another month maybe. Peace out.